It's the territory of phantoms. Scrub and woodland flank narrow rivers that wind for kilometers through the African savanna, the gallery forests of the Serengeti. These shadowy thickets next to the open burning plain offer unlimited niches for rich animal life. This is the domain of a leopardess. In her realm, she might be almost invisible for days appearing out of nowhere to claim her tribute. For some denizens of the forest, she means sudden death. Moving like a shadow, she is the secret queen of the gallery forest. The coolest time of day, just before sunrise. The leopardess has left the bushland for a few minutes of peace, something her cub, playful at five months like all young cats, is determined to interrupt. We're on the edge of a gallery forest in the northern Serengeti. During the night, the leopardess hunted down a young eland after her dawn rest, she carries the remains to safety. It's not easy to drag a heavy weight between spindly olive branches, but they're the only trees here, and every kill has to be protected. That's why leopards always prefer areas with at least a few trees. and it soon becomes clear why precautions are necessary. Job done, she descends, leaving him to eat. But as so often with leopard cubs, inexperience tells. He's grounded his breakfast. His mother's used to it and calmly serves herself, but her attention is distracted. This could get tricky for the cub, too. The cats don't realize the danger till the last moment.
This time it's higher in the tree, with more branches to brace it. The boy was lucky too. And after half an hour, his mother feels safe to come down. The way down is head first as ever. Now, in June, the brooks still have plenty of water. But the grasslands beyond the thick bushes will soon dry out. So this forest offers more than cover, it attracts animals. From the largest, to small secretive ones like this steenbuck that loves the nourishing buds and soft leaves it finds here in abundance. There's the cautious bushbuck, spending most of its time motionless in the undergrowth. A dick-dick hides in the shade, all senses alert. But it needn't fear this hunter. The serval specializes in birds, rats and insects, though baby gazelles are sometimes on the menu. A fully grown reed buck is well beyond its reach. But it still keeps an eye on the mini predator. There's plenty of prey in the grass for this slender hunter. The reed bugs are not in danger, but a predator is a predator. Another family is on the hunt, alerted by the leaping serval. It's a caracal mother with her young. This small, shy wild cat with lynx-like ear tufts also prefers birds. The broken terrain and high species diversity offer leopards excellent hunting opportunities in the gallery forests. But any turn in the river can reveal their feline arch enemies, lions. And any chance they get, they'll attack a leopard. Leopard young are most at risk, but as long as his mother's with him, he's most likely safe. There's plenty of time for play fighting. He needs the training, and she seems to enjoy it. Up to a point. But when she goes hunting, he must stay behind. A cub would just get in the way. Leopard territories in the northern Serengeti, stretching alongside the brooks and rivers, are mostly smaller than 20 square kilometers. But being so narrow, they reach far along the river. The leopardess will cover great distances in her search for prey. Leopards hunt by day and by night, just like lions. And when she has young to feed, there's little time for resting. 
In the late morning, she moves off, patrolling areas she has abandoned for some days. Soon, she has spotted dictics. These shy little browsers live in pairs in small territories. Their senses are just as sharp as the leopardesses. Any strange scent or unexpected bird call instantly attracts their attention. The thicket has multiple eyes and ears to announce any predator, like a single great alarm system. She can't afford to let any opportunity go by. This time, the warning worked. With so many animals on watch, it might be wiser to hunt at night, but the prey is easier to find in daytime. Above her, Nubian woodpeckers have chiseled a nest hole and are busy feeding their chicks. The birds don't interest her, but their tree could be an excellent lookout point. The climb was worth it. Down beside the brook, she spots a reed buck. No rush. Reed bucks stay in place till they sense the danger is past, or until it gets too close. But once they're spotted, this response can play into the hunter's hands. Hugging the edge, skimming the shadows. She takes a long detour. For several minutes, she'll lose sight of her prey. But she has every reason to believe that when she gets within range, it'll still be there. Unfortunately, the last stretch would take her through water. A further detour. The reedbuck has sensed something. The vast majority of hunts end in failure, but there's no sign of frustration and no question of giving up. The border between bush and grassland creates many ecological niches. With abundant drinking water, these are especially desirable habitats for many of the leopard's prey animals. Impala antelopes eat grass as well as leaves. Typical edge dwellers, they're at home both in the bush and in grassland. They don't try to hide in the thicket like other herbivores. Instead, females gather in herds of up to a hundred. Impalas and leopards have regular encounters close to the streams. But in the daytime, the big herds are a tough proposition for the leopardess. Too many eyes and ears.
so the Lepidus scans for alternatives. Thompson's gazelles are among the swiftest animals on the savannah. They prefer open habitats and rely on speed in case of trouble. Leopards can't match their sprints, but when conditions are right, she'll rise to the challenge. First, she needs a good starting position on the edge of the bush, one that offers cover as long as possible. Now, it's all about timing and patience. She'll wait until all the Tommies are distracted. A gentle dip and a couple of isolated bushes are all the cover she needs now. Most grazers have virtually all-round vision. They're very sensitive to movement. Keeping all the gazelles under observation, she moves in step by step, only when they're distracted. A stalk like this can last for 30 minutes or more. The slightest mistake will ruin her efforts. Finally, she's close enough and all heads are down. Flashing hooves could deal a nasty blow, but she knows how to deal with them. Attacks like these come out of the blue for the herbivores near the brook. For the next few days, mother and son will be well fed. She won't come back here soon to give the prey time to forget the trauma and settle. The leopardess is once more out with her son. He will soon know her territory as well as his mother does. Protecting their young is a continuing challenge for leopard mothers. She has learned one solution from her own mother. Put him in an abandoned warthog hole. She has several such hiding places in her territory, so wherever she goes hunting, there's a safe haven nearby. Franklin is a harmless neighbor, but you never know what might turn up in the thickets.
On his own, he's not too keen to stroll far. A shady place next to the shelter is all he needs. By now, in August, many of the side streams have dried up. But these forays are still worthwhile. She knows where the water is. The open savanna is hot, dry, and hard. The grass has been chewed short, offering little nourishment for these giants. The gallery forest beckons with shadow and juicy leaves and the last sources of running water. The heat seems to be getting to the pachyderms. Even the secretary bird has to dash out of the way. The vibrations and the noise can be scary for a little leopard. It's good to have the warthog hole nearby. His mother isn't worried about the elephants. She's fixed on something else. Two steam bucks grazing close by. In the dry season, these little antelopes often come into the bush. They too are in search of juicy leaves. But the presence of the elephants makes the steenbucks extra aware and gives the leopardess away. Further effort would be a waste of time. She won't catch them off guard now. Best to start again somewhere else. Like a shadow, she moves to another part of her territory where she hasn't been seen for some time. Always looking for prey, unaware of her presence. This freshening wind may help her. Waving branches conceal movement. Rustling leaves drown out other sounds and sense travel further. She's got wind of a reed buck. Hard to find between the dancing leaves. She lurks for minutes, all senses straining. Only when the buck gets up can she see it. She doesn't even try to follow through. The chance is gone. but she won't give up. There's plenty of other prey in the bushland. And there's a cub waiting by the warthog hole.
All morning, she goes about her daily business. A movement, a swirl of air, the presence of prey. She's down low, ready to strike. But any wrong movement can give her away since she has no visual contact. She mustn't stay away too long with an impatient son. Time is gnawing at him. Early that afternoon, she sets out again, like a ghost without a sound, searching the bush metre by metre. In this thicket, hunter and hunted can miss each other by centimetres. Hours of work have brought just a tidbit that she'll share with her son. For a leopard, big prey is the exception, and this is the rule. The son seems more delighted by his mother than by her gift. But now, he can play practice his own hunt. Young leopards rarely see their mother's hunt. That means they can't copy her behavior, so his reactions are purely instinctive. And those instincts clearly direct his bite to the right place. By the end of September, there's little water left anywhere. Everything slows down. The leathery leaves of the ebony bushes still shine a deep green, but the brooks and pools are dry. Just a little grass is left. Time to move to another part of her territory. The family take a shortcut 
across open grassland to a distant brook. This country is empty, bald and brown. Without cover, it's not ideal for hunting. But it might serve for hunting practice. If only the real thing was so playfully easy. Out here, they're vulnerable. That suits the leopardess not at all. Above all, she doesn't want to encounter a lion with her son in tow. Perhaps he senses she's unsure. She spots a warthog hole and routinely checks it out for a vulnerable piglet or for its usefulness as a bolt hole. The family that used this one is away. After a tiring walk, they come to a small side valley where there's still a trickle of water and some fresh grass. In places, the trees meet overhead in a canopy. That's where the gallery earns its name. In the twilight, a pied kingfisher seeks out the fish that have gathered in the last few pools. The leopardess hasn't visited this spot for months. She must get her bearings, and she must make sure there are no unpleasant surprises. The sounds of fishing water birds tell her that this is a healthy habitat. But other leopards or lions could have taken over in her absence. So she carefully scans for telltale scent marks. Exhausted by the long trek, her cub needs rest. His mother needs to find him a hiding place so she can carry on hunting. She's quite happy to take over this burrow from its rightful owners. With the boy settled, she can go on her way. What can this part of her territory offer? Vultures are proof that food is nearby. However, there can be unwanted side effects. It depends who else is here. This needs a closer look. A leopard won't reject others' leftovers. But she's always on her guard against hyenas and lions. So she won't expose her son to danger. The vultures have done a good job on the zebra, but there's enough left. Unfortunately, 
the big carcass is too heavy to be hauled up a tree. She doesn't mind vultures or jackals, but there might be bigger unwelcome guests. So she takes in some fast food, nervously peering over her shoulder. In October, the first warthog litters are born. Especially sensitive to heat and cold, these babies now seek their mother's shade. Over their first days, they spend only minutes outside the burrows. This mother has chosen zebras for neighbors because being taller, they're better at spotting predators. But piglets can be annoying and can get injured. So they should all keep a respectful distance, as their mother makes abundantly clear. For the leopardess, the arrival of the piglets is an important signal. These new families will be helpful to her family. A leopardess can't challenge a warthog mother. And on the open savannah, she has no real chance of getting close to the young. Females don't take their baby piglets far from the burrows so that they can escape in a second if trouble is brewing. A fully grown warthog is a formidable adversary. Leopards will avoid the sharp tusks that can even beat off a lion. As the sun beats down, the young soon get too hot. Unable to regulate their body temperature, they must return to the shady burrow as soon as possible. With their attentive mother never far from their side, there's nothing here for the leopardess. But then chance lends a hand. The first babies of the season stir a lot of excitement among the warthogs. With so many hogs together, too much curiosity can result in violent defensive action from the mothers. <laughs> Suddenly, warthogs are chasing each other everywhere. Piglets have been killed in such turmoil. Despite its mother fighting furiously, this piglet has to run for its life. It just makes it to the cover of the bushland. This is a chance for the leopardess if she gets to the piglet first before the mother finds it. But she should avoid the bad-tempered hogs. Unfortunately, the good grass has lured many of them to the edge of the forest. There's no fooling around with this lady. It's hard to say who's more stressed. 
just this second, the piglet shows itself briefly. Back to hunting mode. The young one has left the bush looking for Mama. She must hurry now. But the little one is already back with its mother. Not so easy now. But this time, the leopardess won't give up. Perhaps this is an inexperienced mother and could make a mistake. It's still early afternoon. Sometimes females leave their young unprotected in their burrows when they go for an evening graze. So there's hope yet. This has been a busy and tiring day. Mother and Piglet withdraw for a well-earned rest. Once more, her hard work went unrewarded, as so often when big cats hunt. A few weeks later, it's the short rainy season at the end of October, and the grass is back in lashings. Herbivores can build up their stamina and replenish their reserves. The rivers have filled up. Hippos have walked for kilometers to reach these steaming pools. But it's a season of conflict for warthogs. Nights in the highlands can be very cold, and mothers fight over holes for their young. One will frequently try to dislodge another. Without a safe hideaway, piglets can die of cold in these chilly, rainy weeks. The holes become important meeting points for the hogs. And that presents fresh opportunities for the leopardess. But there's no hurry. This is going to be a lucky dip. For weeks, grey clouds hang over the highlands. Most days bring cold showers. The leopardess takes the bad weather in her stride, watching the mother warthogs struggle to find shelter for their young. Warthogs don't have permanent burrows, and now the competition for holes is at its most intense because the young of the previous litter need accommodation too. Damp days are good days for the huntress. She just has to find the right burrow at the right time. This family group is still looking for a hole, but the piglets are too well protected by the adults. The rain has stopped. In the strong wind, a number of grazing mothers have left their young in the burrows. But there are so many holes. And not every warthog has left the field.
An encounter with a tough hog like this could end painfully. When it gets warmer, she'll have less chance of finding an unprotected piglet. It's becoming a race against time to check out all the possibilities. Each check is brief. Nothing here, move on. And finally, a warthog mother has abandoned her young for too long. Now the leopardess must make sure that the mother doesn't catch her. A disaster for the warthog family is a couple of days' food for the leopardess and her cub. It's a long trek back to her son. As he waits patiently in the undergrowth beside the brook, on another wet and cold afternoon. But the downpours make the grass grow, and that's why the warthogs give birth at this inclement time. The young leopard doesn't mind the weather. He's fine with all the prey mum brings home. Unlike herbivores, the great predators have no fixed season to give birth. Many cubs die young, so mothers can't afford to wait for the next rainy season. They'll mate again as soon as they can. For herbivores, on the other hand, a steady food supply is more important, even if their young suffer from the cold. Once a leopard cub is past the first few months of life, even a deluge doesn't lower his body temperature enough to harm him. She's relaxed. Her son is safe. and newborn herbivores will make for easy hunting in the coming weeks. Mother and son now disappear for months in the dense green gallery forest. Invisible phantoms of the woodlands. But the adventure continues. The leopard family face hard times and perilous encounters. The family grows larger, and the older son must make a long and dangerous journey to adulthood. Northern Serengeti. A quiet brook. Its banks are lined with gallery forest, a confusion of waterways, tangled undergrowth, and tall trees that covers kilometers. It's the home of a leopardess. She has brought up a son here. Now, roughly a year old, he looks almost like a fully grown leopard, but he's still playful and boisterous. 
He survived the toughest and most dangerous months. Now he confidently explores his surroundings, interested in everything. In late July, the great wildebeest migration crosses the border from Tanzania into Kenya, streaming into the Masai Mara Reserve and into the Lepidesis territory. Mother and son are on high alert. Wildebeest calves are valuable prey, not only for leopards. Lions hunt in the bush too. Big cats can take each other by surprise here. All the big predators are deadly rivals because they compete for the same resources. Right now, the leopard is concentrating on her primary task. So is the lioness. At the last moment, she senses something is wrong. The lioness got there first, but that may have saved the leopardess. She wouldn't win a fight with a lion. Her son does the right thing, slinking away unnoticed. Bad luck with the hunt. Good luck to emerge unscathed. No feast today. They make do with the remains of an earlier kill. Even though they hunt together, the older her son gets, the less she will tolerate him. Caring for him is hard work, as he needs more and more food. When the cupboard is bare and they're on short rations, every sliver of bone counts. But for the next three months, there are enough successful wildebeest hunts for the leopardess to feed herself and her son. And he spends much of his time high in a tree, observing the scene, looking out for smaller prey. In September, when the migration continues on its circuit, bringing the wildebeest back towards the southern Serengeti, it's time for the leopardess to return to local prey. An adult reed buck is plenty of food for two leopards. The male can eat to his heart's content. Now a year and a half old, he's an impressive young leopard, almost as big as his mother. If it were up to him, their relationship could continue like this forever. But the comfortable stay at Hotel Mama will soon come to an end. She has a gentleman caller. 
an imposing figure with the powerful neck muscles of an adult male in his prime. Males cruise their territories, covering those of multiple females, on the lookout for opportunities to mate. Scent marks she's been spreading guide him. Around this time, the leopardess loses interest in her son and often roams alone. She even loses interest in hunting. She could easily have crept up on this hare from her cover in the bushes, but she ignores it. She wanders through her domain for days, regularly spraying her scent. Changes are on the way for the leopard family. And a few days later, a rare sight, a leopard couple in peaceful harmony. Leopards join leopardesses only for a few days when the female is receptive. It's almost the only chance to see an elusive male out in the open. In a glade of the gallery forest, they start mating. They'll mate frequently for days. Multiple couplings are necessary to stimulate ovulation. So for a few days, there's plenty of action in the thicket. Her son is still at their base near the river. He now has his mother's last kill to himself. The mighty male mating with his mother may well be his own father. The youngster is wise to keep out of the way. His neighbors, the grey-backed fiscals are not thrilled by his presence here. He's gorging himself right next to the brooding female on her nest. With these fiscals, the last brood stay with the parents and help to raise the next generation. That's why so many birds are squawking around here. He's had enough. While he looks for a shady place for an afternoon rest, the food delivery is picked up again, undisturbed. He finds a secluded spot on the cool bank of the brook. While kilometers away at a denser stretch, his mother and her mate are taking a break. Leopard mating is not a silent affair. 
in contrast to their stealthy hunting. And they haven't finished yet, not by a long way. The noisy honeymoon is audible far and wide. And it draws the attention of a lioness. What she hears is two competitors. And they're distracted. The male takes a break. For a while, it's quiet in the forest. The lioness may lose track for a moment. But it won't be silent here for long. Are those bitten ears still listening out? Since lions and leopards hunt the same prey, this could be just the moment to be rid of a rival. That was close. For now, the honeymoon is over. At the end of October, the rainy season once again has its grip on the land. The great leopard male is far away, patrolling his huge territory. His range covers those of several leopardesses. He will keep moving to find one of them in Estrus. His task in life is to survive and reproduce. But in weather like this, even he needs a bit of shelter.
The downpour transforms the gallery forests in just a few days. Used to crossing dry riverbeds, this giraffe now encounters deep pools. It looks like it needs a while to think it over. This could be why. The crocodiles spend their dry season in hollows in the riverbanks. Now they're about again. But they're patient. A giraffe is a lot of work. The leopardess now spends plenty of time alone. She still needs to look after her son, but he's beginning to fend for himself. Leopards are loners. As the rain falls, tiny rivulets fill up and merge. New waterways form day by day. Linking the different branches of brooks, they become highways for crocodiles. An irresistible scent borne by the water tempts the ancient reptile into a side arm. A hippo has died here, a mountain of meat that the giant catfish would love to share, but the hippo's skin is too tough. They'll have to wait. At first, even the crocodile can tear off only a toenail. It's better than nothing, and his digestive juices will soon get to work on it. And now, it's on a roll. The leopardess's territory now offers enough food for mother and son. High water levels and rich vegetation draw plenty of animals to the riverbank. The pools are cloudy from sediment washed down from the banks. Water full of fish, frogs and insect larvae. The saddlebill stork senses fishy prey with its powerful beak, extra attuned to movement. It can't expect to see prey in this muddy brew. Each bird has its own technique for fishing in the murky waters. The hammer cop seeks its victim just below the surface. Or wherever there's the chance of a delicacy. The little lesser striped swallows are busy collecting mud for the nests they build under rock overhang. Meanwhile, grey-headed kingfishers have long been feeding young in their nests. And the Egyptian geese let their chicks get on with it on their own. Everyone works with their own tools and in the way that suits them. In the succulent green bushland, the young leopard is surrounded by feasting herbivores. The fig trees, above all, attract fruit lovers in hordes, like these African green pigeons. 
That's nothing for him, but the tree is a great lookout point and a good place to rest. All around him, animals are enjoying the rich gifts of the generous season. And that's not only true of the herbivores. Insects offer an inexhaustible supply of nourishment. Beyond the bush, on the savannah grasslands, it's the high point of the year for the ungulates, too. The impalas roam far and wide, with no shortage of grass. Right now, they have no need to venture into the dangerous thicket. The Cory Bustard just wants attention. Specifically, for females to admire his mating plumage. Everywhere, fawns and calves take their first unsteady steps. This Thompson's gazelle comes into the world in the heat of the day when the predators are resting and won't be out. It'll spend the next few weeks pressed against the grass in an environment entirely without cover. Impala mothers have another way to deal with the same problem. At first, they hide their young in thick vegetation, leading them out for short visits to the herd. On the return journey, she's on her own. There's no time to waste to get the baby back to cover. For the young leopard, these weeks are a time of opportunity, but he still has a lot to learn. That fawn has disappeared as though swallowed up by the earth. He knows the baby must be somewhere near. But the mother antelope knows exactly where he is. The young leopard isn't paying attention to the wind. Cleverly, the mother tempts him further and further away from the hiding place. He tries to cut her off, but then a dictic gets in the way. No good. The experienced Impala mother is leaving the field. Now he'd need a huge amount of luck to find the fawn. He knows better than to try. January, four months on. The leopardess has hidden her new arrivals in thick undergrowth, licked clean with no scent and little danger they'll be discovered. She stays away as much as possible so as not to betray their hiding place. In the daytime, she's mostly out hunting. The two baby females are alone most of the day. It's 
the perfect nursery. Utterly inaccessible, completely inexpicuous. The branches pen the cubs against the steep slope like bars on a baby's cot. During the day, the leopardess may be kilometers away. In the late afternoon, it's time to look after her young. She doesn't follow the winding river, but takes the direct route across the savannah. The last thing she needs is someone following her. But today, the danger is in front of her. The old adversaries are out on the plains again. The leopardess is focused on her hungry cubs waiting for her in the thicket far away. It's late, she doesn't want to waste time. Again, at the last moment, her sharp senses register the danger. Neither cat is a particularly good runner, especially over long distances. They're too far apart for this to become an attack. The leopardess runs. And the lioness chases. Just to make a point. The leopardess won't risk returning to the nursery until her competitor has left the scene. The next morning, she's safely in the hideout. After suckling the babies, she licks them clean again, once more clearing their scent. The cubs are now 10 days old. They have only just opened their eyes and can still barely walk, but they are house trained to poo outside. The trouble is, soiling outside the hideout could betray its location. So the mother moves the babies regularly. When she grips them on the neck, the babies fall into a carrying trance so they don't struggle. She's in a hurry now. She wouldn't want to be caught outside with her cubs. It's always possible the lioness might still be around. With one done, she comes back for the second. But this was a good hiding place. In fact, it's quite tricky to extricate the second cub. Finally, she threads her out of the thicket.
she brings the young un together with her sibling. This time, in the safety of a warthog burrow. These holes are valuable as halfway houses, where her young will be invisible during the day. They become very elusive now, disappearing for months in secret hiding places in the gallery forest. These are the most dangerous weeks for the cubs. Rain, cold, and rival cats take a heavy toll of young leopards. Three months later, the young family has survived the critical period. Both cubs are healthy and in good spirits. But they're not used to open grassland and are easily scared. The impala buck is uneasy as well. These are leopards. Up to now, the cubs have spent their whole life in the dense thicket of the gallery. Now, the leopardess takes them to the old hunting grounds she's avoided since the sudden end of her honeymoon. In the fissures of the jagged river banks, she knows dozens of places to hide where her offspring will be safe. The terrain around the brook is an exciting adventure playground for them. They follow their mother around their new home. There's so much to discover. But their mother knows not every neighbor is harmless. They should stay close. And the leopardess is always on the lookout for trouble. For instance, baboons can be very aggressive towards leopards. Strong males can spell real danger for the cubs. Here, the monkeys haven't noticed the leopards yet. And the cubs have no idea how to behave towards their new neighbors. They're seeing these animals for the first time. The baboons have young, too. With her cubs in tow, she'd better keep her distance. Now the baboons have noticed the leopards some way off. She hurries to make space so the monkeys won't feel threatened. It's all a little much for the cubs. A kilometer on, she calls a halt and revives them with a healthy dose of milk. They're being watched. Soon the cubs are back on form, scampering around. A male leopard at the edge of the forest is keeping them in his sights. The leopard mother is fully aware of the intruder. Like all big cats, leopard males can be dangerous to young that are not their own. 
she'll keep a close eye on him. As evening comes, the male is still watching. Finally, the female decides to approach. The cubs don't seem to notice her tension. This is her older son, who has survived on his own in familiar territory. He's anything but welcome. Any male in the vicinity of her young is a threat. He is uncertain. Then something unexpected happens. One of the cubs simply goes up to its older brother, who it's probably seeing for the first time. Intimidated by his mother, he daren't accept the youngster's offer to play. He fears his angry mother, but wants to stay in this familiar environment. The second cub tries to win a playmate, but mother is not amused. The adult son mustn't make a mistake. The leopardess is uncertain too. She breaks eye contact and in a peace offering sits down. The cubs don't give up. Now, the first one rejoins the game. A difficult moment for Big Brother. His mother could interpret any movement as an attack. He must leave. She needs all her territory for herself to raise the new generation. The young male will spend the following weeks seeking a territory not claimed by another male. He'll make it through by killing small animals and is soon far away from his home area. He must obey strict rules on his way to independence. One is stay clear of hyenas and lions. There's no fooling with a big lion and the hyenas judge the situation correctly. <laughs> Not a good place for a young leopard. He moves on. On his way, he prefers areas that remind him of places used by his mother, so he mostly follows thickets alongside brook. It's harder for a young male to find a territory than for a young female. Daughters are often tolerated by their mother at the edge of her range. They may even take it over when she gets old. Sons, though, 
seek their own hunting areas and at the same time look for mates. They need to travel far enough to meet unrelated females. They also have to conquer big territories that cover many female ranges. All this makes it harder for beginners. He may be trying for years, and many a hopeful youngster never succeeds. He's distracted by a male impala, noisily trying to keep the females in his territory under control. If males really fight, there can be an exhausted or even a wounded loser. It's worth waiting for the result. But here the challenger thinks better of it pretty quickly and the buck sees him off before blood is drawn. Nothing here for him. His search for a new home becomes an epic odyssey through the northern Serengeti. In the Maasai Mara, ebony brushland has spread over huge areas in the past decades. That's why, though he is almost 20 kilometers from the thickets of his youth, the environment looks very familiar to him. These bull giraffes can't seem to settle their endless evening duel. They've been at it for hours. They're young, ardent and well-matched. Older bulls are hardly ever seen to fight, and certainly not for so long. He's fascinated, strange creatures doing strange things. At dusk, many ungulates gather in the open, sharing eyes and ears to spot predators. The zebras seem to have picked up on the mood of the giraffes. In the last rays of twilight, the animals settle down for the vigil of the night. Even the combative giraffes call it a day. For the leopard, this is the most important time of the day. The herd of impala females is too much of a challenge, but there are young bachelor males and old weak bucks. They might wander carelessly close to the edge of the brush.
He may not yet have the massive muscles of a fully grown male, but by now he's an experienced, skillful hunter. And it could be time for his first attempt at an impala. The bucks are heavier than he is and have sharp horns, but he can't ignore this chance. Perhaps he chose the wrong victim. But if this is a test, he will pass. This triumph will boost his confidence and greatly improve his chances of victory in the territorial disputes that lie ahead. Many kilometers away beside the brook that was his home for so long, his mother is raising the twins as devotedly as she did their brother. The two cubs are healthy and strong. Once again, an impala is secured in a tree. The youngsters dig in, but they're not especially hungry and they're in no hurry. Everything is fine. And even at this tender age, each spends plenty of time on its own. Leopard cubs play far less together than young lions. When they grow up, they will be loners like their mother. For a long time to come, she will work hard for her family. If all goes well, her daughters may one day inherit the realm of this leopardess. To become in their turn, the elusive queens of the Gallery Forest. Mm -hmm.